Will the market go up or down? Should you lock in or float? Find out this and more with Master of the Markets, hosted by Barry Habib of MBS Highway. Welcome to Master of the Markets. I'm Barry Habib with MBS Highway, and this is created exclusively for Mortgage News Network. Heck of a week last week, a lot of housing data came in along with inflation data. And what does that mean to you and your referral sources? Well, let's break it down because the housing data was excellent, actually. And, and it just keeps adding to the good news that we've been getting with regards to housing. A lot of people calling for the housing market to roll over and play dead. But that's just not happening here, at least when you take a look at the data. And of course, the media wants to put a negative spin on things. It's just their nature to try to attract eyeballs, to attract a lot more eyeballs with negative and fear data than you do with things that are really moving along at a nice clip. So first we got the home market index builders saying that they felt really good. A lot of optimism amongst builders, highest rating in about a year, showing that builders feel pretty confident overall about the market, about foot traffic and about conditions in general. Then we actually got housing starts, another look at new construction. And the headline number came in a little bit below expectations, but then when we dig deeper, we see that the negativity was all related to multifamily commercial type dwellings. When we look at single family residences, it was terrific. Some of the best numbers that we had received in a long time. So when we take a look at overall new construction, it looks pretty favorable moving forward. Now we take a look at existing homes, we got the existing home market report, and that was also much better than expectations. The first positive year over year number we had received in over a year. So great news on new home sales appreciation up five and a half percent that's exactly where we had forecast and it's very healthy in order to be too hot because that's unsustainable this is a perfect level of appreciation and here's the thing if people say that ah five and a half percent i'm not really that happy with it look at it this way if someone were to take let's use an example of a one hundred thousand dollar home and let's say appreciation were five percent well if you put twenty percent down on that home that means your investment is $20,000. If that home were to go up on a twenty on a $100,000 home by 5%, that's $5,000. That means you made $5,000 profit on your $20,000 down payment or investment. That's a 25% rate of return. Pretty darn good. Oh yeah, and you get to live there on top of it. And you still get a tax deduction. This is a great rate of return. It's one of the best investments out there. And people need to know about that and not pay so much attention to some of the negative spin that the media puts on this. So month supply on the market, by the way, was just 5.1 month supply. So inventory level still somewhat tight. And we're looking at a good housing market going forward. As I mentioned, we also got inflation data. And the inflation was very tame. A 1.7% year over year inflation. And when you strip out food and energy is 1.8%. Look, when you take a look at Food prices are on the rise a little bit, but being offset by energy prices, oil prices dropping, we see overall inflation very tame. I don't think the Fed is going to move for a long time, maybe not for the better part or if at all next year. Now, in addition to those numbers, we did get news that came from abroad. Mario Draghi and the European Central Bank now saying they're going to purchase a trillion dollars of a trillion euros of assets. That's about 1.24 trillion dollars US dollars of bonds and other assets. This really helped the stock market, but it also helped the mortgage market in effect because what this means is that the weakening of the euro currency because they're doing quantitative easing along with China cutting rates, weakening their currency. And we know Japan has been in a flood of quantitative easing, which weakens their currency, means the US dollar continues to strengthen. Now, that's not all good because that does mean that our exports now become more expensive for others and it might hurt some of the corporations here in the U.S. But the flip side of that is that a stronger U.S. dollar means it's cheaper to buy foreign goods and that means that inflation, already low, will remain at a very low level. That's very good news for interest rates for the longer term. Now, might they move around? Might they go up a little bit? It's possible, but we don't see any type of meaningful spike in interest rates at least into the foreseeable future. That's a good news if you're borrowing. Maybe not such a good point if you're trying to save money uh, in, in uh, things like CDs and whatnot. All right, let's take a look at some of the charts. As we take a look here, we're going to start here with the 10-year Treasury note. Look at this range. Remember, we identified this range here between the 50-day moving average and the 25. 
And man, it has just been trapped at this level. Now you see we're kind of making a move to the downside here. If yields can break beneath this 230 level, we could be in for a nice move lower and a real good opportunity in interest rates. Remains to be seen. Last week, we remained within that range, unable to break loose. We'll see. This week, it's kind of an abbreviated session with Thanksgiving. You do have the Thanksgiving Day holiday uh, where uh, Monday is a quiet news day. Tuesday and Wednesday are just loaded with all kinds of news, including housing, including uh, GDP data, including uh, the Fed, com Fed speakers out there. So we're going to get a lot of data on the market in just the first three days, including more inflation data from the Fed's most favored gauge of inflation, the personal consumption expenditure. So lots of data in a compact period of time that can really move the needle as far as trading goes early on in the week. We'll keep a watch on that. Listen, you need to get on this every day because talking points are important. You know, salespeople often have call reluctance. And the reason is because you don't have anything to tell that customer or to tell that referral source of great value for them. Well, we do a quick five minute video every single day. We provide you real estate data. We provide you marketing tips and tools. It's so affordable. And best of all, you can take a look at it for free for a couple of weeks. Just click the link below, mbshighway.com forward slash MNN and get a free look at MBS Highway. I think you'll like it very much. If you enjoy this commentary, if you're watching this, might as well sign on. All right. I hope you have a great week. More importantly, a healthy and a happy Thanksgiving holiday. It's actually my favorite holiday of the year. It's just a time to be grateful, a time to be thankful. And we all have so much to be thankful for. Just remember, if things ever get down, they could get a lot worse. Look around you. There's people that wish they were in your position. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye, everyone. Master the Markets airs every Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and can be viewed on MortgageNewsNetwork.com. Thanks for watching us here on Mortgage News Network. You know, you could be part of the action here. If you have a product or service for mortgage professionals, you can be a sponsor and have your commercial here on Mortgage News Network. And if you don't have a commercial, that's okay. We have plenty of clever and creative folks behind the camera who can make a commercial for you. For more information, please send an email to info at mortgagenewsnetwork.com. Or for immediate info, please call Beverly Bolnick, our national sales manager, at 516-409-5555, extension 4. And she'll tell you how you can be part of the action. This is Mortgage News Network.